Hey everybody, I'm Rick Beato and today's Everything Music. It's What Makes This Song Great, episode 99. The band is the cars and the song is just what I needed. Coming up next. Just What I Needed was the first single off the Cars' first album released on June 6, 1978. It was written by Rick Ocasek and produced by the great Roy Thomas Baker, who you will know from Queen, for example. He produced Bohemian Rhapsody. And when you listen to how well this song is produced, or the entire record, you'll start to see the similarities. I mean, it's incredibly well recorded. Now, 78 was a great year for music. Van Halen 1 came out, Devo first record came out, Dire Straits, The Police, Squeeze. They all put out their first record that year. Well, this actually came out during the summertime after my sophomore year, so in between sophomore and junior year. And I was playing in a band at the time called the Monroes, and we actually covered it. So I've been playing this song since the 70s. Let's check out the intro. So I love the intro because of the timing of it. You don't really know where two and four is until the snare comes in. So you hear those four double hits in a row and then the snare. Then two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Wasting all my time. Cause when you're standing on so near. Okay, so we have a one, five, six, four progression, but then one, five, six, and then a major three the second time around. It's really great writing, and you'll always hear the vocal melody will adjust to those notes when it goes to that major three chord. You'll hear it in the solos. I mean, it's really, really well defined. Now, I want to listen to just the guitar parts by themselves because the way that they're recorded is great. Check it out. So you have the muted guitar up the center and then you have a stereo pair playing the stabs. If you think about Van Halen 1, there's just one guitar, Eddie's guitar in one speaker and the reverb in the other. Or when Andy Summers played with the police, there's really just one main part. This was real high production value for the time, right? The stereo layering like this. This is what makes Roy Thomas Baker's sound, right? You'll notice this as we go on, all the extra overdubs that just give it a huge, huge sound. Another thing about New Wave that we had to get used to is the I don't mind coming here. really severe muting of the bass. It's so short, right? No, so near. I kind of lose my mind. And then it's not the perfume that you wear. It's not what, I, what I really like about this is that when the drums come in, I think there's a great it's not the, really well played. Incredibly good timekeeping. You notice that hi-hat build up? Whoa! Another thing you'll notice is the way the guitar layering progresses through the verse. So it starts out with a simple eighth note playing, but halfway through the verse, it goes to two discrete parts. So you have the muted guitar and the left speaker, and then that lifts you up to go into the interlude. It's really great playing there. And listen to the drum fill into it, how the drums just get more intense. And once again, Awesome. There's so many killer little fills that happen in this interlude section and the choruses that Elliot Easton plays. He's such a great player. Listen. Oh, 
I love it. They're also in stereo. Like that part is actually in stereo. And then the synth line that happens in the interlude, which is the main part. <laughs> That is a perfect interlude melody. I love that. That is the new wave sound right there. Okay, the track is perfectly written and perfectly produced, but the vocal performance is amazing. The song's sung by bassist Benjamin Orr. Check him out here from Midnight Special, how good his vocal is. I don't mind you coming here and wasting all my time. When you're standing now so near I kind of lose my mind It's not the perfume that you wear It's not the ribbons in your hair I don't mind you coming here And wasting all my time Not only is his vocal good, but his haircut is amazing. You just heard my favorite part go by there when it goes to first inversion chord on the B major in the uh, lead up to the chorus. Listen. Right here. Oh, so good. You notice the vocals go to a double there too as it leads into the chorus. I love that first inversion B major chord. Oh, so good. And we have this, we have the synth line that, that uh, flows through that whole section. Really great. That bass note makes that whole section. Now this is really an involved part when you think about it. There are so many moving lines that happen. Here's the bass. And then the guitar line is completely different. Let's see the guitar with the bass. And then the, all the great harmony parts, right? Just amazing layered vocals, which is very Roy Thomas Baker. Listen. I guess you're just what I needed. I needed someone to feed. I guess you're just what I needed. I needed someone to bleed. So those, you hear that electric piano in there. It sounds like a whirly playing along with it. Those guitar stabs are on there. You have the single note. Let me put the bass in with it. Oh, that is un unbelievable. Here's the whole band together. Really incredible orchestration. I guess you're just what I needed. I needed someone to feed. I guess you're just what I needed. I needed someone to bleed. I love that the drums are so in the pocket here. Everybody in the cars were great players. And that's what made the band so interesting to me. Not only were they amazing songwriters, but all their parts were so well thought out. The drums are, are really in the pocket. This is just a perfectly performed and arranged pop song. Next, we have Elliot Easton's guitar solo. I had it in my top 10 underrated guitar solos of all time. It's really amazing, listen. <laughs> There's, he plays thirds all over the place. He's uh, so that's a third of the E chord. Then he bends into the third of the B, uh, da -da 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 -da, and then the fourth to the third. So he's following the changes perfectly. He 
even there, he goes, he bends up to the third of the A major chord. And then right there, to the third of the A flat chord again. And then, and then those sixths at the end. Just perfect, goes up to that, uh, to the, to the third of the E major chord, third and the fifth, right? Fifth, third. Total chord tone solo, very much like a jazz player. That's what makes it such a classic solo. In fact, when I learned this, when I was uh, 15 or so, 16, um, it taught me a lot about how to play lead, how to go for those notes that I had never really heard. Most of the solos I played up till that time were blues-based rock solos. Jimmy Page, David Gilmour, Jimi Hendrix. And this solo was like, well, what are those notes? Didn't sound like anything I had heard, but it sounded great. So after the guitar solo, goes back to the verse. I don't mind you coming here. But we have a weird thing that happens. Right here. The snare turns around. Then it goes back. So it goes to one and three for a second, like halfway through. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. That's so cool, right? And then back to two and four. Then. Incredible singing. And then on the second phrase, right here, listen. I guess you're just what I needed. Great singing. Then the coda. Right there, those answer vocals that happen along with that melody line, this became a standard thing to do, but they were one of the first bands to do this. That's all for now. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're a first time viewer, ring the bell. That'll let you know when I go live and when a new video comes out. Give it a thumbs up, leave a comment. That's very important. If you're interested in the Beato book, go to my website at www.rickbeato.com. Follow me on Instagram at rickbeato1. Check out the new Beato ear training program at beatoeartraining.com. And if you wanna support the channel even more, think about becoming a member of the Beato Club. Thanks for watching.